for tuning into my channel. My name is Sandy. My channel name is Let's Get Fit with Sandy. I'm a member of Weight Watchers or WW. Um, I have lost uh, 86.4 pounds so far on the plan. I don't plan on gaining any of that back during this whole virus thing. I'm sticking to my plan. I'm sticking to what I'm going to do. I do do a daily vlog. I'm trying to be inspirational in all of these hard times. And uh, I came across this article today, uh, 16 food storage tips to, store, uh, to stretch your groceries. Um, I know if you've been shopping in the last couple of days, you realize that uh, there's a really hard to get food off of the shelves because it's going crazy. Uh, I do believe that uh, in time, the um, shelves will be restocked. But I, I think that we need to stop panicking and going crazy buying everything. And I completely understand the sentiment of that because it's, you know, like everybody is a, a me first attitude, which is sad. But um, we, we uh, have to take some precautions. So when the shop, the stores are restocked, we should just buy what we need and leave the other ones. Uh, also, if it has like a WIC sticker on the, the label, you should really kind of just, which is WIC. Um, that's for families that are, you know, on food stamps and food programs and things like that, and they really need that food. So if you can really avoid buying that food, uh, you really should think of the, your fellow man at this point. But, um, like I said, I do think that the food is going to be stretched. I do think this is a whole new way of living. I think that we're going to live like this in the future for a while. Uh, just like our parents and grandparents did during the Depression, afterwards they learned that they never wasted food. Uh, I'm of the clean plate generation, and that's because my mother lived through the Depression, and she remembered that there was no food, and so we didn't waste anything. So I think we're going to learn a lot of different ways of storing foods and uh, preparing ourselves if this ever happens again, and uh, not keeping our heads in the sand so much, and just realize that this is the new normal. This is the new way of life. And unfortunately, it took something like this to uh, snap us all back into reality, but... Uh, we will survive. I know we will survive. And I know we will get through this. And we'll just come out the other end a better person. And we'll be uh, hopefully not as greedy. Because I'm including myself in that. You know, I, I think that we all, to some extent, as much as we would not like to admit it, have some sort of uh, attitude that, you know, like, it'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. It's always going to happen to someone else. And, boy, it looks so small, big in this thing or small or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, um, so let's get on with the tips. I'm going to leave a link to the article that I read in the description box below if you want to go over to it and see it yourself. Uh, the number one thing they say is to store your citrus in the fridge. Um, you should be eating a lot of vitamin C products right now. You know, anyhow, you should be eating your oranges and your lemons and your grapefruits and things like that because, um, you know, obviously it's going to build up your immune system a little better. I know this is a virus and I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. But it seems to me that if you're healthy, you seem to have the higher survival rate than someone that's not healthy. Sometimes you're just not healthy due to faults that aren't yours, you know, like beyond your control. But uh, if we can do our part as far as staying healthy, and one of the things is to eat a lot of citrus. And uh, I have found um, from my grandson, because my grandson did my shopping for me the other day, that uh, there's lots of fruits and vegetables. People are just going crazy buying this, the, the goodies, the cookies, the chips, the you know things like that. But um, you know they'll, they'll only last so long. And really, I think you feel better when you eat healthy. You, you have your body feels better, and your body pays you back. Now the tomatoes are another story. Some articles say that you should store the, the tomatoes in the fridge. Others say that you should store them on the counter. They say if you store them in the fridge, that uh, they'll last a little bit longer, but they lose a little bit of their flavor. I, I always store mine on the uh, shelf on the counter but um you know maybe i'm going to start a new way of thinking with you know like the food limitations that there are um, number two is to take the cheese out of the plastic wrap that it comes in and wrap it in parchment paper or cheese paper um, i've never seen cheese paper but i'm sure it's out there um, i do have parchment paper i never i never knew that they said the plastic keeps the cheese from breathing properly and that's what uh, causes it to go moldy quicker so um Take the cheese out of the wrappers. Um, number three is restore refrigerated greens with a paper towel. I have the Rubbermaid Smart containers, and I do store my celery. I store all my vegetables in these um, 
containers. But I always put a layer of paper towel on the bottom and a layer of paper towel on the top. It seems to absorb the wetness. And then every few days, I just change out the paper towel. Now, I realize that paper towel might be <laughs> scarce now, along with toilet paper and that. But um, I think that you can probably figure out Maybe I, if it worse comes to worse, maybe just put a washcloth or something on the bottom to kind of absorb the moisture. Because I think it's just something that you need to absorb the moisture of the products. Um, number four is to freeze uh, any herbs that you have that are about to wilt in some olive oil. And what they suggested was to get an uh, ice cube tray and put some olive oil in the ice cube trays and then put your um, herbs in that and then freeze them. And then you can just pop them out as you need it. And they also suggested that for any leftover broth. You know, I have a half container of leftover chicken broth. I never even thought of that. And you put them in the little containers, and then really that's smart to do all, all the time, even after this passes, because uh, if you're making some soups in that, you might only need to take a couple cubes out and then pop them into your stew or soups or whatever you're making. Um, number six is puree any... Um, past their prime greens, you know, like kale and spinach and that. And then you can use them in a smoothie. I'm not a big fan of smoothies, but uh, I know that they're really big. Some people use the, the kale and the spinach. I, um, I pretty much eat my spinach before it goes bad, so I don't know. Uh, number seven, stash berries in a fridge smart container. I, I buy my berries in the past. I've always bought my berries like in, in a a large quantity because I do have the fridge smart containers which uh, I can buy a package of strawberries and if I leave them in the actual container from the refrigerator after about a week they're starting to go moldy I have kept them in my refrigerator over two weeks with the paper towel with the method of putting the paper towel on the bottom putting the little grate that they have in it and then the strawberries on top of that and some paper towel on top and just changing that out and uh, it really it really does make a difference, it, even with my fruits and my vegetables. Another thing, I store my mushrooms in a, which I got this from a friend of mine who's a chef, in a lunch bag, in a brown paper bag. They'll, they'll absorb, the moisture absorbs better in the brown paper bag, and they last a lot longer too. Um, store your natural butters, or nut butters, <clears throat> upside down. Uh, I do that with my peanut butter all the time anyhow, because I don't know, I use Jif peanut butter, which seems a little, little more oily, and uh, the oil kind of sits to the top and kind of separates. If you turn it upside down, the oils kind of float through the whole peanut butter rather than just settle on the top. So um, they they suggested that. Um, number nine is to learn your zones of your refrigerator, and you know I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to make that my last one because there's a great big explanation on that one. So we're gonna skip that one for now. Uh, number 10 is to double check your fridge temperatures. You wanna make sure that sometimes when you're putting stuff in the fridge, you might hit the little button or, you know, like mine is like buttons. It's very easy, like if you're reaching in, my hand could hit something and change the button levels. You want your refrigerator to be stored at about 40 degrees and your freezer at zero degrees. And you wanna, you know, wanna make sure, sometimes if you have it too cold, the air is not going to circulate properly through your refrigerator, and, and some of your foods might go bad. Um, number 11 is to freeze leftover paste, tomato paste, in little scoops. Another good idea I never thought of. You know, a lot of times when you're using it, you just need a little bit of the paste to... Uh, I, I have never seen in my Kroger, they, they have the squeeze tubes where you can just squeeze out what you need. Uh, they don't offer that at my Kroger's. Um, they just have the little cans or the bigger cans. A lot of times if you buy the bigger can, it's a better deal, but you know, you don't need the whole can. What they're suggesting is like to take scoops out and freeze the little scoops in a baggie. So then when you need them, you just take out how many scoops you need. Another good thought. Um, number 12 is don't leave your leftover can foods in the cans that they came in. Um, I always take the stuff out of the can and put it into, I like a glass jar, actually, a glass dish, Pyrex dish to store my foods in. Um, I, I just think that they store a little bit better, that's just me. But um, I, I never leave anything in a can, never. I just always, when I open it, I use what I'm gonna use and I always store the rest. Um, store herbs upright in fresh water. I never knew that. I don't ever buy fresh herbs though, so, um, but that's a good tip. 
Uh, number 14 is freeze your meat in portion sizes. When you do go to the store and they do have the meats, you might be tempted to buy like the big package of chicken breasts and then you just stick it in the freezer. Uh, so then you got to thaw because it's hard to pull out one or two after they froze together solid. Uh, portion out how many you want. If you know you're going to eat two chicken breasts at a meal, then just put two in a, in a, a baggie and then freeze just the two. And uh, same with your burger. If you buy like a bulk of, amount of burger, but you know you're not going to use the whole bulk, portion it out into different sizes. And then when you're putting stuff in the freezer, make sure you date it and put how many, you know, like if it's a pound, just put, I put a pound of ground chuck or ground pound or ground turkey or whatever it is, and write that on the label and put it in the freezer so that when you want to pull it out, that way you're not thawing foods and you're not eating it for like days on end because let's face it, we're going to now be the generation that doesn't waste food. How many times have we just like thought, well, it was leftovers, I'm not going to eat leftovers. I bet you a lot of us are going to start eating leftovers now. Um, number 15 is don't wash produce until it's time to eat. Uh, I never wash my produce until I'm ready to eat it. I always, as soon as I get home, I put it in. I was, t I know that there's chemicals on a lot of our fruits and vegetables, but I'm of the belief, and I'm just, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a scientist, and I don't know, but I'm of the belief that it's already in the product. It's already going to be in the, in the thing. So as long as you wash it off before you eat it, you're going to somewhat um, get rid of them and um, get rid of the germs and that. Another thing which I saw on TV was they suggested um, why you would want to put them in containers anyhow is like when you get things home from the refrigerator, especially your can, or from the store rather, when you get home, wash them off. You know, wash the cans, wash the jars, wash them all, put them in the thing. Leave the bags that you brought them in. Uh, I use um, returnable bags. So I put them in the wash machine and wash them, you know. Um, they don't know about this virus. They're saying it could live on plastic, it can live on cardboard. They, they don't know. They just don't know. So if you can unload stuff, and even better if you can clean it off before you bring it in your house. I know that seems pretty drastic, and we don't want to get to that point. But uh, if you want to take that precaution, that's one of the precautions that they suggest. But they also suggest that you don't leave them in the original containers that comes from the stores if you can help it. Um, you can also uh, freeze your milk, your cheeses, your butters. Um, I find that um, I've always in the past, like when cheese was on sale, I would like buy a bunch of it and put it in the freezer. If, if a butter was in, you know, butter, I always froze it. Now I've never, I froze milk one time and I didn't like the way it tasted afterwards and it kind of had like a yellowish tinge to it. It was still healthy to drink because I called like the better, I called somebody to find out if it was still safe. And they go, yeah, it's just a discoloration that happens when it freezes. Um, I have enough milk, and like I said, I have my grandson go to the store if I need some more. So now we'll get back to number, what was it, number uh, nine, the, to learn the zones of your refrigerator. Um, the top shelf should be strictly for your leftover prepared foods and perishable items um, like your yogurts, your dips, your, you know, like your pops and beverages and things like that. You want to put that on the top shelf. And on your lower shelves, you want to put your raw meat. But when you put them your raw meat on the shelves, put a plate underneath it because we all know they kind of bleed or they blood, you know, like a little bit. Or they, they even like chicken, the chicken juices will, will leak through. You don't want that to spread to your other foods in the fridge. So, you know, have like a bowl or something that you're going to keep it in. Um, also keep your eggs and your dairy um, on the bottom shelves too. Uh, do not put them in the refrigerator door, especially so many of us keep our milk in the door. The door is really the the least cold spot in your fridge, so um, you should kind of avoid putting foods like that in there. In your meat drawer, you should always put your deli meats and your cheeses. Uh, your crisper drawers, you should adjust the settings. Um, have one as a low humidity drawer and one as a high humidity drawer. And on the low humidity drawer, you want to keep your produce that has skin on it, like apples and pears and berries and tomatoes. They say that if you have pitted fruit, you should leave that out, because if you put it in the refrigerator, pitted fruit seems, tends to go uh, rotten quicker. And then your high humidity foods uh, are like your leafy greens, your spinaches, your broccolis, things like that, cauliflowers. You want to keep that in the high humidity. And in your fridge door, you should just keep your condiments and... Uh, your salad dressings and things like that, ketchup, mustard. Uh, you don't really need to keep ketchup and mustard in the fridge, but I think we're just so used to it. But definitely keep your mayonnaises and things like that in there. 
Um, if you have like a freezer, I have a drawer that I pull out, so I don't have like shelves like in a like a freezer door. But uh, if you have uh, shelves in your freezer, um, you should keep the ice cream or anything that's really high fat on the top shelf. And then on the in the in the other doors on the bottom shelves, you should keep um, leftover um, frozen vegetables, leftover food that you have, leftover meals. And remember that your door shelves, just like your fridge, are a little bit warmer. So um, you would put things in there that you know you're going to use pretty quick, that you want to somewhat thaw out a little bit. That you know, like if you know you're going to have burger for dinner in a day or two, keep the burger in the door, and so then it's a little quicker to thaw when you need it. Uh, also. Um, Anything that's like high moisture, you don't want to keep in the freezer. I tried to save um, some honey baked ham in the freezer, which is uh, very high in sodium. And uh, it really lost its taste and its texture and everything. I ended up throwing it away because it just didn't taste right. So, but I have frozen um, lunch meats and I've never had a problem with it. You know, like when the Hillshire Farms, um, the deli turkeys and the deli hams and things like that, or the Oscar Mayer or things like that went on sale. My bacon, my sausages and things like that. I have froze that and I've had no problems with that. But also remember, don't leave anything unrefrigerated for more than two hours. Get it in the refrigerator, you don't want it to spoil. And um, you can't freeze food that have been fried or yogurt or um, anything that has a high moisture like I had mentioned earlier. And um, also label in the freezer, label your, your bins, your, your little cups or whatever you're freezing. Label it and put a date on it so you know. And always try to eat the, the oldest dates first so that your stuff stays fresher. Just a few tips. I hope they help you out. Uh, I know it's a scary time and I know that we're all worried about how this is going to end. But, um, you know, as long as we're diligent and what we're doing, uh, we're not wasteful. Um, if you do go to the grocery stores, please, please, please be kind to the people that are showing up to work. I know that we're all complaining that there's no food on the shelves and that. There's food in the warehouses, but unfortunately, people are getting so badly treated at the stores that they're thinking, why do I want to go in? And they're just calling in. Or they're just not showing up. Or they just don't really care because, you know, they're going to get yelled at anyhow. What's the point of trying to please anybody? I'm going to get yelled at anyhow. I have worked with the public. I love working with the public. But... Um, the public can be kind of nasty sometimes. Sometimes I think that everybody should work one day in public service just to see how how people treat you, you know, because um, for every 100 customers I had, I had 99 of the best customers ever. But I, you always remember that one customer. That one customer always ruined it for the other 99. Don't be, one of the, don't be that one customer. Be one of the 99 and treat these people nice. Say some extra prayers for all of our health care workers because you know what? We need them. We just need them so desperately. And if you can figure out a way, if you're a sewer, to make masks or something and donate them to the hospital, do that. Do something. Because if they go down, that's our whole line of defense against this virus. Because uh, we, we have to keep them healthy. Because without them, we're not healthy. And even if you fly in an airplane and they always tell you when the oxygen mask falls down, put it on yourself first. We want them to take care of themselves first. We want them to be protected. And all I can ask for is that everybody prays that this doesn't go on forever and that uh, when it's all out, all done and we come back out on the other side that uh, we've learned a little bit about ourselves and we realize that we're one of the 99, not that one. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, hit the like button, share it if you think somebody might like it, and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're doing to, uh, to survive this, I guess. So thank you so much for watching.